Hey everybody, JDM what here. Um, I want to talk to you about NVIDIA GTX series undervolting, overclocking, and the best way to uh, lower your lower your power consumption, increase your performance, and decrease your heat output. Especially for mining rigs, uh, this works for gaming rigs too, but the settings might be a little different. Um, but in this video, we're going to be talking about mining. Um, you can take these same principles and apply it to gaming if you want. Um, I'm making this video because I've had a lot of questions about it. And also, I've seen quite a few mining channels on YouTube uh, do undervolting, and they do it the brute force, really ineffective way, and explain things in a way that doesn't really apply to everyone. So the settings I'm going to show you in this video will apply to any GTX 1060 3 gig or 6 gig. You can use them safely, and you'll 99% of the time be able to run these settings. Uh, with the exception, if you get a really bad run at the Silicon Lottery, and you just get a bunk chip or something, and it just doesn't work. But these are incredibly safe settings. They'll lower your temperatures, um, smooth out your performance, really make your power draw a lot lower and more consistent as well. So I think all those things are important to mining. Maybe a little bit less so for gaming, but if you want more consistent FPS in gaming, this is a good way to go too. Um, so just consider it for that as well. Um, so we have MSI Afterburner open here, and then this is the uh, 7X GTX 1060 rig. Um, got a few different brands of GTX 1060 in here. Um, they're all three gig variants. Uh, we've got an MSI, let's see, two Asus, uh, a couple Zotax and a couple UGAs. Um, so the temperatures are going to vary a little bit between each one. The power percent, you know, power current power draw is going to differ between each card because they're not all reference cards. And on top of that, you have different draws from just even even though they're the same chip, um, the Silicon Lottery and just different factors will affect the power draw. So. While they're similar, they're not all identical, but that's not really important for what we're doing today. Um, in the main MSI Afterburner window, we have the card number one, which is the very left card open, and it is running completely default settings, except for my custom fan speed curve, which you can run really whatever fan speed curve you want. Um, <clears throat> actually, it's not running default settings. Let's reset it. So I'll reset it and then I'll just turn my fan speed curve back on. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to take the power limit and you want to put that down to 90. And the the reason we do this is I I just don't want my cards going over 100% power draw. 90 is merely a suggestion to the card. 90 is not a hard limit. Uh, as you can see that, I mean, it's just the power draw will go up and down, up and down, up and down. And it, I mean, like, you know, at 100, it will surpass 108, 109%. So it's a suggestion and it tries to keep it underneath that amount, but it doesn't really do a good job of that. Um, I just, you know, running seven cards on a thousand watt power supply, if they're all set to a hundred and it's just, I don't know, you're asking for a bad time. Um, temp limit, uh, we're not going to even get close to any temp limit. I mean, you could set this at 70 and I still wouldn't even hit it. So I'm not going to mess with it. Just leave it there. Uh, core clock and memory clock, um, memory clock. Uh, you'll find other miners say that, oh, you can do plus 400, plus 500, whatever. Well, the, the issue with saying the plus number versus the actual core or memory clock speed is that every card has a different base speed. So if you're telling someone with a 1800 megahertz base speed to do plus 500 core, it's not going to turn out well and it won't work just because that's different than a card that has 1500 megahertz core. So when someone tells you to do oh, plus 300 plus 500 any card can do that that's not true so look at your total core speed and your total me uh, memory speed 
So we're going to shoot for 4300 megahertz, which on this card, and I would say most 1060s, is plus 500. So we'll do plus 500. And then we're going to apply that. So all we did was power, power limit, we ignored temp limit, we ignored core clock for now, and memory clock. And then we're going to apply that. We're going to give it a second. We're going to wait for this, and we see the memory speed is updated to 4303. And then you want to either press Control F, or you can press this little graph right here next to the core clock. And here's your voltage and uh, voltage and core speed graph. And you can see it's just bouncing around. Um, that's what we want to avoid. And this is where a lot of the the power percentage uh, comes from. So I like to lock it in and I have not seen another mining video where someone's locked in the core voltage. Um, and I'll show you why this is amazing. So you click on a point and we're going to use, uh, 0.912 or it just says 912 and we're going to hit L the letter L on the keyboard and you can see that yellow line show up and just drag this guy out of the way and we're going to apply that and so that locks it in you know if it's underneath the power target it will lock it in at that core voltage and at that frequency so we're locked it in at 912 and 1847 megahertz i'm going to close this sometimes this graph doesn't like to update correctly you see there's a little bit of a gap there but that's okay um, so now that we've done that, this is where we adjust the core clock speed. So when you adjust the core clock speed, you don't want to drag these points around. I want to use the default slider and we're going to make this as we increase the core clock speed. We want to go towards, I like to run about 1900 megahertz. So plus 54 should get us there. 1898. Uh, it doesn't do steps in one megahertz. It does steps in like, I think it's 13 megahertz. So it, it, it only like the next one it can go up to is like 1911. Um, so 1898 is a good target and that's where all of my other cards are running. And so now that we've applied that, we're locked in well under our power target of 90%. Uh, this will likely never hit 90%. Um, as you can see, it's already down. And it's just going to get dip down to 70, come back up to 84, and kind of stay around there. And locking in the voltage, and uh, it, in my in my opinion, puts less stress on your card. You're not, it's not having to manage the voltage. It's just locked in solid. The core the core clock speed doesn't change, and really the only thing that changes is a little bit of power fluctuation. Um, you know, as it's doing work and the algorithm is working and whatnot. Uh, and then, of course, the temperature's gone down. So we were at 63, you know, when we first started or something like that. Now we're at 59. I'm running the same fan speed curve, and we're nice and solid. So this is a setting that you can run on any GTX 1060, 3 gig, 6 gig. And that's, uh, just to go over that, that's 912 millivolts. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why it dipped. Um, 912 millivolts and 1898 megahertz, 4303 megahertz RAM, 90% power limit, and yeah, that's it. Um, so the reason that this is dipping just a little is because it's just hitting the power, the, uh, the power limit. And I guess, we, yeah, we switched algorithms. That's why. So something to consider is that when we switch algorithms, every algorithm handles, I mean, it puts different stress on the GPUs. So that's another reason to lock it in. Um, because if you, I mean, basically you want to be consistent across all the algorithms. You want to say, you want to keep your power draw consistent. You want to keep your, uh, core speed consistent, everything. Uh, so all in all, this will give you a better result, better performance, better temperatures. And then if you want to tweak from here, 
uh, just increase your core clock a couple megahertz. You know, um, I would leave the memory at 4303. I wouldn't really push it past that. I mean, I suppose you could, but I mean, that's really up to you. Uh, I think this is a very generous overclock. Um, if you have a good card, you can maybe even go down to, you know, 900 and 900 millivolts and then bump your core speed back up to the same area. Or if you feel like, you know, you have, you're only running three or four cards and you have lots of power supply headroom, maybe run 925 or 950 and bump your core to near 2000 megahertz. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of tweaking you can do once you have a locked in voltage. And it's uh, much more predictable and much easier to work with. Uh, so just keep in mind that changing algorithms will drastically change your power draw. And, uh, you know, so this method considers all of that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's pretty easy. And don't forget to save this to your profile. So we're going to save this to profile one and make sure that profile is applied on afterburner startup. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for DCX 1060 undervolting. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, and, uh, I'll probably do a shorter video on my 1070 settings, but it's going to be pretty similar. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.